So um, first of all, here are the sort of resources for this workshop. Um, this document lives at uh, libraries.cca.edu slash vault hyphen workshop. Um, and it's really just a brief kind of overview of some of the things surrounding vault. So not super important to have or anything, but in case you need to reference it back. Um, and then there's also a uh, description of vault as a service on the library's website that kind of goes into a little bit more detail on how we see vault operating and answers a few other questions that aren't going to be answered during this. So just some useful background info and then vault itself is, is pretty easy to find at vault.cca.edu. So um, to start off with, we can kind of talk about what Vault does well and what it doesn't do well. Um, so there's really no configuration needed for um, instructors. All they have to do is tell their students, upload your work to Vault, and it will appear there um, automatically with the right structured information around it. Um, so there's very little setup work that um, instructors need to do. Um, the student work that it collects, too, has a lot of structured information um, related to it that has to do not only with like the course information, so um, things like instructor's name, section code, semester, all that stuff we, we kind of get for free in Vault, but also um, often details related to like the artistic genre of a work or the materials used, the software pieces used. Um, it, that varies widely from collection to collection. Um, but usually there's some kind of additional detail that's captured in Vault. Uh, Vault is good at finding works that are created by a particular class or a particular program because of all that structured data. Um, so that can be used to do advanced searches or in various um, student work folders. People can drill down and find the specific things that they look for. Um, but that is the, the part of work that instructors have to actually do is they have to put in a little bit of effort to find the coursework that's been uploaded. So it's not completely, um, completely easy, but that's a rather minor thing and what I'll, what I'll go over in this workshop. And then um, Vault is completely accessible from China because it's just a CCA hosted service, doesn't utilize anything from Google, so it'll work just fine. And then works are also archived for future use, which is Vault's main purpose, right, is it's our digital archive. And I see that as kind of an added bonus. You know, this semester there are extraordinary circumstances. That's not the main reason why we're, we're telling people to use Vault or helping them use Vault. But um, it is really nice that we have these works in there with all that structured information and they can be utilized for things like assessment or accreditation activities in the future, which is a really common use case for the items that are stored in Vault. So things like external reviews or, you know, visits from accreditors like WASC and NASAD, um, all of that uh, Vault has been pretty important in, in helping us with. Um, the things that it doesn't do are kind of like all of the learning management systems uh, that you're used to, the operations like class discussions, forums, gradings, you know, Vault is a digital archive. So it's, it doesn't really know about any of that stuff and you can't really do it in there. Um, there is technically like a comments feature, but it's disabled for most collections and it doesn't really work well. It's definitely not a great place to have like a back and forth comment discussion. Um, it doesn't know anything about deadlines either. So if you tell your students to upload, it's not like they're going to get a reminder from Vault or a prompt or anything. You kind of have to manually stay on top of that and, and check who has uploaded and, and notify the people who haven't. Um, and then also it's not great with group projects. Um, there are a few programs that uh, have support for a group project, and it's something that I can add if it's really important, um, so I can, I can work on it and, and add that. But for the most part, it's meant for individual student works um, and is, isn't great at groups. But uh, that kind of brings us to the next um, section, which is that Vault is extremely flexible. Um, a lot of things take time to implement but I can ultimately make the, the system work in different particular ways. And the fact that every program is quite different in Vault kind of reflects that because people have had their own tasks or um, different appearances that they, they've wanted to put up and Vault has been able to accommodate that. So um, like something I can do is notifications for faculty members so that they see an item come in whenever it's submitted and then they have a chance to approve or reject it. So if it's approved, it goes live, stays in Vault. 
if it's rejected, um, gets sent back to the student and they get like a, a short message on why. Um, and then also most collections, this, sh this shouldn't be an issue, but sometimes they're not set up to collect just regular coursework. Um, and that's something that I can add and is, is pretty quick if that does come up. But for the most part, I, I don't think that'll be an issue. Um, I just wanted to head off a few really common uh, questions that come up almost every time I talk about Vault. So um, the first one is, uh, how are student works used? Who has permission to use student works? Um, for the most part, it is as part of those assessment or accreditation activities, like I've mentioned. Um, there's one person in, in marketing or communications who I sit down with and have a training session, session um, and they can see all student work. And the intention is that they use them for you know, marketing materials and stuff. But we train them to approach both the program chair and the student creator and get that permission before using it. And I don't know of any instance where that, that workflow hasn't been followed. Um, and if I heard you know, a, about abuse in that way, we would have a conversation with communications and we would make sure it didn't happen again. So I, you know, it's, it is just a social convention. There's no actual technical constraint to stop them from using something, um, but it's worked well thus far. So I just feel like that's, that's worth warning people about. Um, who can see what in Vault? Uh, faculty can see everything within their program. So you know, everyone in interaction design is, is gonna be able to see the things that are uploaded. Um, and then basically the, the people administratively that are above that, so like the you know, um, design division administrators would be able to see it. And then the provost and the president, you know, the, the people up at the top of the college will also be able to see it. Um, the main unintuitive thing is that students can't see each other's work. Um, again, not, not great for collaborative work, for group projects. Um, so they won't be able to do like critiques or, or comment on each other um, because it's just that isn't how we've designed things. They can't do that on Classroom either. So really, and I, don't, I don't use Moodle. So I don't know what okay. that is, but classroom students can't see each other's work or comments on each other's work by faculty. Okay. Yep. So yeah, you know, that's a, a pretty common limitation and Vault is subject to it as well. You just kind of have to use some kind of specialized tool if, if you want students to be able to share and comment on each other's work. Um, and then finally, how long are things kept? Um, for the duration of Vault's existence, we've said, you know, we'll keep things forever, um, but that's just not practical moving forward. It's an incredible volume of material. Um, so I've drafted a policy on how long we'll keep things, and it hasn't been approved by management yet, but uh, it will most likely be six years for most things and as long as we can for certain select things. And the select things tend to be works that have like some kind of special um, association, such as having won an award, having had some kind of like mark of recognition bestowed on it by a faculty member or administrator, being used in a accreditation review, for instance, would be the sort of thing that would lead us to keep something forever. Um, syllabi get kept forever, but um, most student works will get cleared out eventually. And um, I am gonna notify people before we do it. You know, we're gonna message everyone and give them time. To, to log in and download their works if they want. And students do retain access after they graduate. As long as they have a CCA account, they can log in and uh, they can log in and, and see their works. So, um, so basically the, the rest of the session, I'm just gonna show what it looks like for a student and what it looks like for a faculty member. So I will log in, upload an example work and then um, log in as the faculty member and show you a couple different tricks to seeing like the classwork of a particular class. Cause I assume that's what people are really gonna wanna do. So yeah. if we look at Vault, um, this is just the, the typical Vault dashboard that you see when you're not signed in. And then there's a login. Um, this is the, the CCA login. So I'm gonna use a special test student thing, but this would just be everybody's usual username that they use everywhere and the same password they use everywhere. Uh, so that'll log in. This error only happens with test students. Um, should be able to refresh. Ah, didn't go well. Um, so now we see all the main menu um, options that appear. 
and contribute is the main one that students use. Now, students should be familiar with Vault. It's, it's almost impossible for them to go through their CCA career having not been asked to upload at some point. Um, the first year program is, is probably our heaviest user, so people get that right away and, and know how to do it. So they should be familiar with these steps, but just to, to let you know what they're seeing and what they're doing, they have this whole long list of, of every program. Um, because so it doesn't, it doesn't constrain by their major? No, it does not. Because okay. um, students could be in any class, right? Um, Vault doesn't actually know people's majors, just in general. Okay. But okay. Um, yeah, they could be in any class, so we let them upload to any um, program. And it doesn't know anything about uh, enrollment either. So technically, students can make mistakes and upload to the wrong course. Um, that doesn't happen very often. It's kind of like a, a weird mistake to make, but it is technically possible. Uh, I'm going to do the example in the illustration program just because it is pretty simplistic and, and easy to see. Some of the other programs are a little bit more sophisticated and custom. Yeah, um, I'd love to see what interaction design looks yeah, like. Yeah, I think we should look at I'm that of. <laughs> after. I'll do this example because okay. it'll. I, I know it and I know it's okay. going to work simple, but then we can take a look at interaction design and also, you know, like if you see things you want changed, we can just do it. Okay, cool. Um, you know, so it's, it's completely up to you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and contribute coursework. Um, there are other options in most um, collections. Um, students will see fewer options than uh, faculty who go in and, and happen to edit something, though that's not something that faculty need to do. Uh, but in this case, you can see that there's coursework, but there's also a couple sort of senior portfolio thesis, a couple like cumulative work types that people might be able to submit. Um, there's a little option uh, we're trying to track if people are using an iPad and Apple Pencil in an illustration as part of a sort of side project. But then on the second page is where most of the details are filled out. So as I mentioned that structured information earlier, this genre is a, is a good example of that. So that's something specific to illustration. This won't be in the interaction design collection, um, but it helps them sort through works or, or search and pull up like works after the fact um, because we have this, this information. So I can, for instance, say I'm doing a, a children's book. Um, then almost every coursework thing is going to have this course selector that will work exactly the same. Uh, students need to drill down through the semester to the particular course they want. Um, so I'm just going to use this illustration 100 example with uh, Michael Wirtz as the instructor. Uh, so they go all the way down and they select and hit OK. And that gets filled in. And then beneath it, um, you can do, for this collection, kind of any number of works. So they could actually do multiple illustrations. They could add a work and you kind of get a separate box with all these questions about it. Um, I will just do one for now. So I will remove that one. Um, but it's, it's worth noting that this collection, the way it's set up is people could submit a number of items at once if they wanted to. So this will be first work. And it would really be up to the instructor to say, you know, like, okay, upload this assignment, then this assignment, then this assignment, or alternatively, upload everything at once, right? You could ask them to upload several things at once. Um, it's, it's flexible in that way. Um, this is a brand new laptop, so I don't even know where can I find a, a sure a PDF of Marx's to upload there? Um, then under media, uh, this is more structured information related to it, right? So I could select something there. We'll say like printmaking, an optional description, an optional additional description, which is of like the entire work, um, all of the different items. If somebody were to to upload multiple of them, um, and you can tell these are optional because they don't have the little red asterisk, which indicates uh, a required field. Um, so I'll just write in here um, test work description, just to give you a sense of where they will display, and then longer description of the whole assignment. Um, and then when I go to finish, I can hit save and hit publish. Um, and that kind of finishes the whole, the whole circuit. But uh, I just want to give a quick example. Students won't be able to submit something that doesn't have all the required fields. 
So if I try to submit without genre, it will say, oh, you're actually missing something. And there's this finish form button that highlights the missing field. Um, so that can be quite powerful. It means that students can't like make a mistake and leave something out that's, that's really necessary to understanding something. So I can go ahead and hit save, hit publish. And then I see this brief sort of overview screen that shows all the information that was just filled out. So the course details are sort of split up. If I click on any one, it'll show me all the, um, the related works. So like spring 2020, show me all the illustration works from spring 2020. Um, it gives a little preview here. Um, this was a, like an EPUB or a PDF file or something. So the thumbnail isn't really useful, but um, images will have uh, appropriate thumbnails generated. Um, some like uh, sophisticated file types, you know, like a 3D model or something like that, or InDesign file or something like that, maybe won't have a useful thumbnail uh, generated, but basic image files and even movies ha have thumbnails. Yeah, mostly we do PDFs and links, like links to prototypes. Mm, okay. Um, PDFs unfortunately have a problem where if it's a PDF that uses layers, uh, the thumbnail often comes out kind of uh, blackened and distorted. Um, yeah, I mean, so, mostly we're doing, I mean, we're doing task flows and journey maps and uh, models, mm -hmm. you know, using tools like Lucidchart and, well, they won't be using Lucidchart since that's a Google product, but mm. um, tools like that. And then they have process book, which is all their sketches and process to get that. And everything is required. We require uh, PDFs. Okay. Um, well, for and then PDFs, prototypes are usually done in XD and you know other tools where they just need to give us a link. Yeah. Can they upload links? In this? Um. So that's a good question. I guess we'll we'll look at the interaction design collection and find out because that does work a little little differently. Um, so let's go to contribute and interaction design. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't ever, I, I, I've never asked for anything to be delivered by Vault. I don't know of any of our faculty who have. Um, yeah, I, d I don't think this is one of the more heavily used collections for sure. Um, yeah, I think most of us use Google there. Classroom. I don't, I don't think any of us use Moodle. Hmm. Um, I think almost to a person we use Classroom. Okay. Um, so yeah, we can, we can just kind of take a look at this. So this uh, is a very simple form, it popped right into coursework. So there was no other option. So it didn't even have that first page, which is kind of nice, actually. This makes it easier for students. Um, so you have the, the work title. Um, it actually does support um, group projects, now that I'm seeing it, because you can type out all the names. The complicated thing there is that uh, if, you know, if person one uploads and says, I did this with person two, I think only person one will be able to see it. Um, I, can t I can follow up with you and, and test that after the fact, but I don't think that this just text list is gonna, gonna be enough to show people. But I'll just put like um, my name. And then a course selector. So this will work exactly the same as the other one did. Should be a, a complete course uh, list of everything here. So we can say design research, sure. Assignment description. Oh, so this is uh, something that was semi-complete. I see, this is like a note to myself, probably because, yeah, just nobody ever used the interaction design menu. I can remove that field. So would it be helpful if we like sent you a list of like metadata checkbox things for checkboxes and yeah absolutely yeah. okay yeah and i can get those added pretty um easily um things along the lines of what you saw in illustration you know yeah where if there's a genre or just like type of work um that's yeah, important we don't have to genres but we have different phases of process mm, so okay. you know is this research is it uh sketches is it uh, concept map journey map uh is it you know i mean we have we have we have a uh, clear vocabulary of types of things that yeah. uh, students do. I, that would be perfect. Yeah, okay. if you go ahead and, and send that to me and I can have, um, 
a, a checkbox list here instead of this assignment description. And should that um, be the same across the whole program or? Um, I think I? so. Okay. I think it would make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can, I can, we can work on that and, and send that to you. Okay. And just, uh, and start, you know, just a list. Yeah. And all, I mean, once I remove this, people will be able to upload and do things anyway. So it's not like you're blocking anything, but once I have that, I can add it and then you're getting even a little bit more detail. Right. Yeah, I'll try um, to get that collected uploads. this week. Um, okay. We have a Google Classroom that we're using yeah. for communication and across this all, and I'll just have us just kind of work on a list, a master okay. list that I can get to you. Cool. Um, and then I do see that we have uh, multiple files. So let's see, can we upload a link here? It does not look like it. Um, I can change that though. So you want your students to be able to, to attach links to a... That, that, that is sometimes an option because I know some of the classes, like I have some students who do things in XD or Envision prototypes where we have a link or some of the classes, they have the students write medium posts mm -hmm. about the work um, and the link is what they submit. Now, of course, we could do that via email, um, but True. Yeah. It would, you know, if, if we can add it here, we might as well. Okay. Yeah. For sure. I, th I think it makes sense to, to put it here as well. Okay. Um, yep. So I'll make sure to get links added to that. Um, there's the same uh, iPad Apple Pencil checkbox, actually. Only a few collections have that, but ones where it's relevant. So I guess we decided it was relevant for, um, for interaction design. And then the same kind of generic description at the end of the, the whole project. So yeah. Pretty, pretty functional. I should be able to go ahead and save and publish. And okay. yep, thumbnails up at the top in this one and then the, the data down below. And then as a faculty, what do I yes. see? So let's go ahead and sign in as a faculty member. So I'm gonna log out of test student. Um, and I'm going to actually imitate the illustration instructor, Michael Wirtz, um, so that we're seeing exactly that same assignment that we submitted. I think that's just a little bit more clear. So faculty members sign in and um, there's basically two ways to find your coursework as, as I think of it, and that is search and browsing using the student work folder. So I'll, I'll show search first and then we can do browsing. Um, search basically you wanna put in as many search terms as you can that are gonna uniquely describe your particular section, um, which will always be if you just quote the, um, the semester and then type in the, uh, the section code, that's gonna pull up just your materials and nobody else's because no one else is going to have like that section code anywhere in the description of the item, right? So I put quotes around spring 2020, um, just in case somebody uses the two words separately, it probably would work without the, the quotes anyways. Um, and then LS 1001. Now, um, it did pull out the syllabus for the, the um, course as well, because Michael had uploaded that and that's, uh, visible to him. So it pulled up that. You can, uh, if you want to be really specific, there are all these ways to search specifically within a division or within a uh, particular program. So you could select illustration program here. And now it's only showing coursework because uh, syllabi are actually in a separate collection. They're in this collection called the syll syllabus collection. Um, I don't think that's super necessary, but this is the most specific way to do things. And for, for certain programs, maybe this is helpful because they have, I don't know, extra documentation or, or other items floating around that get returned by this search. Um, what's quite handy is once you've done this and you're seeing all your student work listed out here, um, you can add this search to your favorites. Um, favorites is like an internal bookmarking system that Vault has. You can favorite an individual item that somebody has contributed, but you can also favorite a search. And that's quite powerful because once you have one that's pulling back just your student's work, 
you favorite that, you don't have to remember how to do it over and over again, right? Now you just go to your favorite and it, it'll be there. So I can say, um, you know, I think it's like exploring illustration or something was the, the title of this course. And maybe I'll just do a SP20 to denote the semester. So I can add that. And then under my favorites, um, it's gonna show me my individual items that have been favorited first, but then there's a second page for searches. And we can see it in there. I'm actually gonna remove this old one. Um, and when I click that, I'm just right back where I was. Um, now, as you imagine, uh, this works pretty well when we have just like the one work in there. But if you're asking students to upload like each assignment, there's gonna be a whole bunch of them and then more will come in and this list gets pretty lengthy quite quickly yeah. depending on how many students you have, how many assignments you're asking them to contribute. Uh, by default, it does get sorted um, uh, reverse chronologically. So that's useful. You're gonna see the most recent ones first. And you can also use these pretty excellent filters to get exactly what you want. So a, a common use case can be, oh, I asked students to submit this su assignment um, you know, on Monday, let's look at only works that were submitted Monday and after. Um, and that'll show me not the older assignments, but just the most recent one. Um, so that can be quite handy. And then if you are looking for a specific student's work, you can try to filter um, by user. So this searches, um, you can type in a full name or you can type in a username. Our uh, test student literally had the, the username test student, all one word. So that should pull, you can see there's a number of them here. That should pull the, the person up there. But, um, you know, I could also write my own name in here and it would also be able to, to limit just the stuff that I had uploaded. So that gives you a little bit more control over um, finding, finding works once you have a lot of them collected. Um, once, you, once you're mm -hmm. looking at someone's work, can you download it? Yes, you can. Okay. That's a, a good question. So um, if I click the result here, um, there is a export button. That's maybe a little bit of a, a strange term and, and people wouldn't be familiar with it, but that'll allow you to download all the files. Um, so that can be really handy for works where you've asked students to upload several things and it might be very tedious to click through it. Um, you can go to export and um, you actually have to check off this include files button. Um, that's a little unfortunate that you have to do that extra step, but then it'll, it'll let you download and you, it'll, you know, label it with the title of the, um, the work. So that should be a l slightly informative at least and, and help you find it. Okay. Yeah, some of our PDF files get too big to view in the browser. Mm. Oh yeah, so for them. sure. And so downloading, downloading them will help. Yeah. And the other, we're only there was only one work submitted, right? Um, but the other thing that can be quite useful if you're going through and reviewing things and grading is uh, the search results are actually accessible from within an item with these previous and next buttons. So what you can do is you can do a search that pulls back everything for your section, uh, click the first result, and then start stepping through them one by one with the, the next button. So that is a, a pretty effective way to review a series of works. Um, that's cool. Yes, yeah, that's um, quite handy. So that was, um, this all has been how to search to find something. Um, the other way to do it is using this student work uh, folder over on the left-hand side. So this kind of organizes all the student work that's been submitted. Um, everyone can see different amounts of it. So the, the totals in these um, boxes are probably gonna be different for you. They're different for me when I sign in. Uh, so I wouldn't get distracted by that too much, but um, just drilling down basically from the division to the program to the specific course is how you find things. So for illustration, it would be design division, uh, illustration here. And we can already see that, that that work is at the top, but if I wanted to find the specific uh, 
section, I would go to browse by semester. It was the spring semester, exploring illustration, and then the faculty member. Um, clicking the course title, you know, multiple people might teach the same section or something, for instance. So this lets you differentiate oh, yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you again, end up just basically at the same list that you would have. Exactly. Yep. It, it should be exactly the same list. It's just kind of a different way of getting there. You don't have to type like kind of a specially crafted search term. Um, instead, it's a pretty logical series of steps. Um, it takes a little bit longer because there's quite a bit of clicking through that. But again, you actually can add it to your favorites just like we did with the other method. So it says add search to favorites. I, conceptually, this is like a folder and not really a search, but um, we can still do the same thing. So I'll just say that this is like spring 20 folder. Um, add that in there. And then if I go to my favorites, I have both of them listed. Um, and kind of just, you know, a matter of preference, what people want to do in, in, in terms of getting to, uh, getting to the right stuff and the same filters are available when you use a folder too. So you okay. can once again, um, filter by date, uh, filter by the student's name. Even you could add that in there as a keyword or filter, use that user selector to find a, um, a particular student and filter to their works. So that'll get you to the, the proper place, hopefully.